Welcome to this tutorial on introduction to flowcharts. In this tutorial we'll be looking at the anatomy of flowcharts. We'll use a simple problem to have a look at the input, the processing and the output, developing our design thinking to improve our computational thinking. So let's get underway. In this tutorial I'll be using Creately. It has a free basic plan that you can use and this web tool allows up to three collaborators in one project. While I'm not sponsored by this website, I would encourage you using this website to help develop your skills in computational thinking. So once you select start drawing now and log in, you can then create a new document. Now there's no reason why you can't do this with pen and paper and in some situations it's actually a lot quicker to use pen and paper to develop your flowcharts. I'm going to use the basic flowchart tool and I'm going to give the document a name flowchart. So let's have a look at the basic tools that we need to design a flowchart. Now all flowcharts start with a begin and end bubble. So we'll be selecting one of these. Now some people will use the word start, some people will use the word begin. Others will actually use a convention such as begin and then the name of the program which could be counter. All flowcharts end with the same bubble. And once again, you can either use the word end or people will use end and then counter again. Now other symbols that we'll use are the input and output symbols. This parallelogram is used to get information from the user or output information back to the user. So anytime that we require an input, even if it's coming from an external file or from the internet, or we need to output any information to the screen, to the internet, to a file on our computer, we use this symbol. The other symbol we mainly use is the processing box. This is when we want the computer to actually do something. So if we need form a mathematical calculation, we need to apply some sort of algorithm, that is done in a processing box. Now you notice that this follows very much the computer model of input, processing and output. And that is why these two objects are the major ones that we use in flowcharts. Whenever the computer needs to make a decision, we use the decision diamond. Now the decision diamond can either be an if then statement with one leg coming off for if the decision statement is true. It could also be an if then else statement. Where one leg could be true and the other leg being false, depending on the outcome of the condition of the decision statement. So this is known as a decision diamond. So now you can see the, all the components of the start end, the input output box, the processing box, and the decision diamond. And then we need to represent flow. So we need to show a line with an arrow to indicate the flow of the program. So let's look at how we can actually solve a problem with this. So let's have a look at the objective or outcome that's been given to us. What we're required to do is add two numbers together that the user supplies and display the results to the user. So to begin all flow charts, we need to start with the begin end and we're gonna start number add. So we know that this module, this flow chart is for the program number add. Using the computer model, the first thing we need to do is get the input so we can then process this to then give it back to the user as an output. So we need to collect the data, process the data into information and then give the information back to the user. So let's start with an input symbol. Now in this program, I can either drag it out and drop it on the screen, or I can click on the start bubble and then select the symbol that I want. This will automatically draw the line for me. So the first thing we need to do is get two numbers. Now I could get the two numbers at the same time and go get two numbers, but computers like to do things by steps. We really need to think about a decomposition of the algorithm. We need to break it down into the smallest parts. So we need to look at our abstraction. Well, get two numbers quite okay at this point of time in our program. 
Sometimes we need to abstract it and give it some more detail. So we could get number one. Then we can get the second number by once again adding another input box, which is get number two. Because this is an algorithm, it's very English-like. So we don't have to worry about storing it somewhere. We don't have to really worry about the syntactical nature of the coding language that we're writing it in. All we need to do is get the concept across for the programmer. It's up to the programmer to translate each of these inputs into its syntactical code to retrieve the data from the end user. Now the program required us to get two numbers. There are no other inputs required in our outcome or objective. So therefore we can move on to the next step of our computer model, which is the processing. To do this, we need to put in a symbol for processing, which is the processing box. In the processing box, we put the algorithm we required to use. In this case, in this case, we want to add the two numbers together. Now in this abstraction, it may not be detailed enough for the end programmer. So we might want to say, add number one to number two. We can also set this out like a mathematical question. You could actually say, answer is equal to number one plus number two, which is a basic mathematical algorithm. And most programmers will be able to implement this. Now that we've completed the processing, we need to go back up to our outcome or objective and check that we've actually finished all the processing required. Add two numbers together. I've done that and there's no other processing required. So the last thing we need to do is display the result to the user. So once again, to do that, we need to use an input output symbol. And then we just need to output the answer. So we could use several different words for an output. We could actually use the word output. We can use the word print. We could also use the word display or any other word that will tell the programmer what to do. So in this case here, I'm just gonna go print answer. So now that there's no more steps in my algorithm, all I need to do then is to end the actual program. To do that, I go to the start end bubble Place that on the screen, just link those up, and then end number add. So this concludes our very first tutorial on creating a flowchart. We've looked at the start and end bubbles, we've looked at the input and output containers, and also we looked at the processing boxes required to solve an outcome or objective of a program. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you have, give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and I hope you've learned something new about this design thinking tool as you improve your computational thinking. And also have a look around my YouTube channel for other useful computational thinking tutorials.